Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today I wanted to talk about this concept. What modalities do you need to heal? Alright, I'll get to that in a minute. Hope everybody's well. Another long day. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Two group coaching calls. Six hours of basically open office hours where people can come in. If you'd like some support, join the group, painfreeyougroup.com. I mean, it's 100 bucks a month. You join for a month. You get all sorts of support. Get your questions answered. Have direct access to me. Uh, you get a video course and up to 16 group coaching calls that you can show up for. You don't have to show up to them all. You don't have to be on video. You can ask questions anonymous, anonymously, submit questions. You'll get them answered. Um, but if you're uncertain, for a hundred bucks, you get a month worth of access. You may find you like it and you want to stick around a little bit longer. You may find you get what you need in the first month. In either case, um, you know, if you're looking for some more support, it's worth it. So, the concept today is what modalities, meaning tools, techniques, practices, do you need in order to get well? Right? Good question. Because there's tons of TMS mind body coaches out there. There's all sorts of practices and techniques and tools. And I often get, you know, people asking me, what do I need to do? Somebody said to me today in a YouTube or Facebook comment. Other coaches are telling me I need to meditate for an hour a day, otherwise I won't get better. And there's other people saying you need to do journaling, you need to do somatic tracking, you need to do breath work, you need to do trauma release, you need to do, need to do, need to do. And um, what do you need to do? You need to convey to your brain that you're not in danger, period. End of discussion. If these tools help you do that, wonderful. If they help you feel safer, wonderful. But if they're creating a whole bunch of pressure to say, well, I didn't do my hour today, I'm not going to get better, are they creating more safety? Or the perception that I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing what I need to do to get better. So if there's any coaches out there that are saying it's mandatory for you to do an hour of breath work, an hour of meditation, or you won't get better. Really? You're telling me nobody gets better without two hours a day of meditation and breath work? Seriously? So if anybody's saying what you need to do, you know, question it. I think it's important to convey safety to the brain. Why? Because at the highest, highest level, the brain's perception of danger is what turns on symptoms. And if there's fear and attention for these perceived dangers and these perceived danger symptoms, they're going to stick around. So the one thing you need to do is teach your brain that you're not broken, you're not sick, you're not in danger. What tools and practices do you need to do Nothing in particular. People get better with meditation, journaling, somatic tracking, breath work. Some people just get better conveying safety to their brain consistently and not buying into the fear, which is generally my approach. I try to simplify it. Perceived danger is a problem. Safety is the solution. Is that a technique or tool or practice or modality? No, not really. It's an overall concept. It's a belief. It's a, it's a highest level belief of saying, holy crap, I'm actually okay. I'm really not broken. I think that's the key here. If these various modalities and techniques and tools and practices help you get there, wonderful. Do them. You know, I had a success story by the name of Phil, and uh, he talked about how meditation was a big part of his recovery. But he was very clear 
he wasn't doing meditation to heal himself. He was doing it because it started off his day well and it felt good. Period. Right? So can you get better with meditation? It depends. If you're doing it and always looking over your shoulder, did that work? Nope. Still the pain. Did it work? Nope. Still the pain. You're doing it for an outcome, not because it feels good. So ask yourself the question, when you do these practices, techniques, tools, modalities, are they authentically making you feel safer? Or are you doing it because somebody told you to and you think, if I do it the way they told me to, I'm going to get better? Are you? If so, it may or may not work. If it's conveying safety and teaching you that you're all right, wonderful. Do it. Keep doing it. But if you're doing it to get the outcome and you're frustrated that you haven't got the outcome yet and you did an hour and 20 minutes instead of two hours and now you're not going to get better because you didn't get your two hours in, it's creating more fear, more perceived danger. And so ask yourself the question, why am I doing these techniques, tools, practices, modalities? Am I doing it to fix something or does it feel nice? Is it making me feel safer or more in danger if I don't do the right thing at the right quantity and number of minutes or hours? Right? There's no right way to do this. There's no perfect way to do this. Simply put, if perceived danger is a problem, you got to figure out what way is going to work best for you to convey safety credibly in, in quantities that exceed the brain's current perception of danger. When you do that consistently, you're going to get better. How do you do it? There's a bunch of tools out there. But I think sometimes a simple conversation with yourself to go, symptoms are up, but I know what's going on. So, hey, brain, come here. Let's work together. Nothing horrible is happening. Seriously, I didn't do anything. I just woke up 10 a.m. The symptoms are through the roof. Yeah, I might have had some fearful thoughts, worried about how bad the day's going to be. But guess what? Shh, I'm not in trouble. Nothing bad happened. I got up, made breakfast, and boom, symptoms went up. Come on, brain. Let's work together. Nothing significant, nothing serious is going on. No, I don't need to spend two hours a day meditating and doing breath work and somatic tracking and journaling and everything else. Because all that does is put pressure on me to fix myself perfectly. You don't need to do all that. Convey safety credibly, consistently enough to outweigh the brain's current perception of danger. It's not complicated. Are the things you are doing convincing yourself that you're safe and you're good? This is all temporary. It's going to pass. Or are the things you're doing desperately trying to apply tools and techniques to fix yourself so that you can get better and you know is it giving you pressure to say I didn't do two hours or I didn't do an hour I only did 40 minutes today oh no I'm not going to get better because I didn't do the prescribed amount of time there's no right amount of time there's no minimum amount of time are you consistently conveying credible evidence of safety are you responding as if you're in trouble Ah, or are you responding as if you're okay? Little to no concern. You know, you don't need a regimen of like 16 point checklist. Not necessary, folks. It's really not necessary. So, I hope this helps. I hope this helps. I'm going to wrap it up here. As always, I will see you tomorrow. I love you. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care.